Hello and welcome to Foundational Foundry, tutorial series from the Foundry Roundtable. I am Drogan1701, and with me is Green Dragoon. Hello. Mark Hawkman. Hey. And Duncan Idaho. Ahoy hoy. Well, um, after a pretty great response to our first uh, set of episodes, uh, we are going to move along with uh, more videos for uh, prospective Foundry authors. Um, tonight's video is going to be, uh, we're going to make a mission from start to finish. Uh, so you can kind of see the process. Uh, obviously, it'll be a very simple mission so that we can do it um, within a reasonable time frame. Um, so take it away, Green Your Green. So yeah, um... So up until this point, we've kind of covered all of the different uh, aspects of the uh, Foundry. And now we get the chance to uh, dive in and actually uh, see it in action. So we've kind of uh, plotted out a uh, simple mission here. It's going to be have about four maps. Um, and the goal here is that it kind of gives a demonstration of pretty much all of the concepts that we've discussed thus far. So the mission I have in, ha in mind is a uh, we are going to um, a Federation convoy has uh, failed to report in, and we are or the player ship will be uh, sent to investigate. Now what we've done is we have um, or Dragoon has anyway uh, created an outline for this mission first, so we know uh, roughly what all of the maps and objectives are going to be. Um, this is always a good thing to do is to, to do some planning before you start your mission uh, so you don't just uh, completely start with a blank slate. But yeah, um, there's, like I said, there's going to be about four maps. Uh, we're going to start off, uh, uh, let's go ahead and uh, start off uh, here at the beginning and uh, write the description. So. As Dragoon is uh, doing this on our screen, um, the rest of us uh, experienced Foundry authors here will be offering advice, and we also might uh, solicit some advice from the uh, chat room that we have uh, with us on the live broadcast. And the first piece of advice I have for Green Dragoon is uh, that Federation should be capitalized. You're Ooh. right. <laughs> Man, I'm just going to hire you as my new spell checker. Well, um, capitalization is uh, obviously um, a big thing that I deal with uh, a lot in my uh, professional career being a journalist. So uh, it's something that uh, jumps out at me. Uh, and of course, there's actually a lot of different, uh, I'm not sure what you'd call it, literary styles. Uh, that use very different capitalization rules. So obviously, um, for each author, you know, the best way to go is to just go with what you um, and and you know capitalize what you think you should capitalize. But you know, it's always good to have something to look at it and see if uh, no, maybe you don't need to capitalize that, or you should capitalize something else. All right. So uh, if we want to uh, listen a little feedback from the uh, chat room, um, this uh, mission uh, could use a foundry door. So the description is, a Federation convoy has failed to report in. The enter full sh or the player ship name has been sent to investigate. W with the rise of piracy in the region, Starfleet fears the worst. Not overly complicated, but just enough to entice the uh, player. I should point out this, because I don't think we've ever talked about it before. You'll see this uh, brackets um, full ship name. This is uh, what's called a tag, and uh, they can be uh, inserted into dialogues to basically swap out um, player info. So we have access to like the, the player's name, his rank, um, the name of the ship in a couple of formats. Um, there's a 
couple of options for uh, text formatting too. We can uh, do out of character text, or which is a uh, yellowish color, or we can do uh, like critical mission info text, which is a green color. And it's something I'm sure we'll do more of. Um, but I thought I'd point that out. And the one thing I'd personally recommend is that having that formatting in the mission description can help it just to make it stand out a little bit more, to make it seem um, not necessarily professionally formatted, but just to give it a little bit more polish when you're making that first pitch, that first presentation to someone. So making sure that everything for the formatting, that you're making it an effort to make it look interesting in all respects, that's definitely something that's advisable when you're putting that description out there, because it's the first thing most players will see unless they've run up to the second door. Yeah, in a way, uh, um, publishing a founding mission is a bit like uh, applying for a job, and the description here is kind of like the cover letter. You want to kind of make sure it's flawless. Yeah. Typo there, and it's going to <laughs> it's going to stand out. So in the, um, let's see, for missions that, uh, for, uh, uh, for um, sorry, for um, Foundry Doors, the one I'd actually recommend is Orion, because I don't think there's a mission there right now. And it's in the middle of Federation space, and for piracy and Federation shipping, it's, pos it's possibly relevant. True, and... Uh... Having it close to Federation space also um, means that we can set it up as a, a mission more accessible to uh, early players. Um, the enemies that we choose to frame this story in will kind of uh, set what level that the uh, mission is uh, available to. So and if we if stick we with use Orion, the level is zero. Yeah, so it's available to everyone. Versus, I know somebody uh, suggested. Uh, Borg in the uh, um, chat, and uh, unfortunately, Borg are what levels like thirty-five? Uh, are they 41. forty-one? Yeah, they're, they're they're in the thirty to forty range. Some of that has changed over the years, so if we don't know, uh, the, the best thing to do would be to look it up. I might be doing that right now. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna Borg forty-one. Okay, so. Um, in our case, Orions, Nausicans, um, even Lethians would work. We have Lethians? We, we well. Um, um, you, you can take KDF mobs and reskin them using Lethian costumes, although I think Lithians may show up. No, actually, never mind. Uh, the, the KDF mobs are interesting in that they, are, they all have defined subgroups and you don't have like random kdf mobs um you have them in space uh one of the or i don't know if this is intentional but for some of their units you know they'll be occasionally swapped out with battleships for noskins and corn but oh, wow. um i don't think we have any individual lethian uh, mob assets all right so ryan is actually really deep in the federation at this point <laughs> i'm just looking <laughs> at the map here um, well, one thing I, I just thought of is that Orions are a race that had um, had contact with the Vulcans for centuries prior to TOS. Um, Ranger Ryu is, or actually, sorry, uh, SFC 100 is suggesting close to Pycanus, that sort of area, down towards Klingon space. I'm trying to remember, keeping in mind that the sector blocks aren't there anymore. <laughs> hmm. Um, about so the... Tremble, Kern, um, Zarentine, Casse. Uh, Tremble. Pretty sure one of the early Klingon arc missions takes place here. Yeah. It's okay. a um, interesting backstory. All right, so we've picked our location. I'm actually going to go ahead and before I forget, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to type 
mission use the mission info tag so it'll actually appear as green and seed the Trimble system in the beta quadrant. And this goes back to something we said before, uh, is that you want to make it abundantly clear where your mission starts. Mm -hmm. This is like one of those uh, Definitely. mistakes uh, often made uh, by new authors and uh, even some veteran authors. Just one quick note, uh, proceed has a C in it. Thank you. <laughs> Man, I'm just gonna, just gonna finish Midas Part 3 live and just have you guys <laughs> proof it as I'm making it. Uh, you know, that's not a horrible idea. <laughs> It'd okay. probably only take about 12 hours. It would take a lot longer. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's uh, go ahead and... Well, first and foremost, um, we're going to need an opening dialogue. So this is usually a uh, admiral or something. And in fact, just recently... Quinn? Admiral Quinn. Yeah, I, I thought of him him because I actually used him for, for that test thing I did today. Yeah, I mean, for forever, we have not, we've only just recently gotten access to him. And so for years, we've been coming up with all of these random admirals and whatnots. Um, well, just I mean, to did it there, there was this one guy a, a while back who, who made a uh, custom costume that looks pretty close to Admiral Quinn. Yes, but you can only do that after they've accepted the mission. Before that, you're limited to uh, stock NPCs. Oh, uh, hmm. Okay, so... So, okay, so if you notice over here, you'll see a, a number of uh, three tabs and a, a number of buttons under each. Excuse me, I had a cough there. Um, these are all of the different uh, tags that you can use, which are uh, very nice. Under fonts, you have the uh, mission info and out of character. So if you highlight some text, for instance, here, and click mission info, it'll automatically stick the uh, tags around. Um, um, also, if you click the mission info button before typing in the text, you can it'll put the tags there, and then you can just type in the text inside them. Yep. OK. Um, in this case, I want him to refer to the player by their rank. So we'll say rank. And how about we have a situation. Here, Orion. We use Trimble. Oh, that's right. We use Trimble. <laughs> had it listed as Ryan in your outline, which is, of course, why you... Yeah, well, that's because uh, Duncan that suggested position. it. <laughs> I'm on to your pro-Orion stance. Hmm. All rights for green people. Now, Dragoon is uh, typing his dialogue right into the Foundry interface. Um, but you can also, uh, and this is something that many of us do, write it in a word processor outside the Foundry. True. And then copy and paste it in. This allows you to you know, take advantage of spell check because there's no automatic spell check in the Foundry. Um, and you know, it also allows you to you know, show your dialogue to somebody if you want somebody to edit your dialogue before you put it in. And it allows you to, to be able to write without actually being in the boundary, um, which can be useful if, uh, say, you know, I don't know, your internet goes out or something like that. Or you're it's out and about at Starbucks, at work. Uh, while I'm camping this weekend. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, I write Foundry Dialogue while I camp. Do it mm -hmm. right on my iPad. Hmm. 
I was doing that on vacation too. And then I threw it all away because I had idea and new ideas when, the moment I got back. Yeah, the one thing I'll say on this uh, subject is um, it's very useful to write it outside, but it's, it is an additional step to go through the copy paste. And that's not so bad when you're dealing with these large intro ch uh, chunks of intro dialogue. And it's very, especially since this is the first thing players see, there's huge benefits from making sure everything is absolutely perfect. For more elaborate conversational dialogue, it's sometimes easier to write it directly in the editor because there is a lot, it can be a lot more complicated, shorter responses, it would be a lot more copy and pasting operations. The drawback to that's riskier, you could make more errors. But it's a uh, gets to be a, a little bit more of a trade off. So just whatever works for you. Um, it's it just um, go with uh, that approach. Um, there's no there's definitely no uh, one right or wrong way to uh, work with this kind of dialogue. Well, one thing that uh, occurred to me with that is that the best use I've ever found for writing things outside the game is. Well, obviously, you can run it through a spell checker, but also there's the fact that if you write it down on paper, you can, you know, maybe, you know, like rethink it when you're not sitting at the computer. Yeah, True. it's also really nice for uh, um, correcting typos as you're test playing a mission. Yeah. I would have the system where I'd have my dialogue in the Word document, and then I would make corrections to the document, highlight any changes I made. And then go back into the uh, editor and then incorporate all of the highlighted changes. Some of these things are probably will demonstrate and uh, that sort of thing uh, in a later episode. Uh, Karma Plasticity is asking, what is the character limit in the box? It is actually 1,000 uh, and 1, is uh, li listed right here. Um, so I've, we currently use 325 of 1,000, so. All right, so the uh, in, the introductory dialogue will say, have Admiral Quinn say, uh, Captain, or whatever the rank is, uh, we have a situation near Trimble. A Federation convoy led by the USS Foundation has failed to report in. With a recent war, and you'll notice I did not specify which war, piracy has uh, been on the rise. We need... And I put two twice. We need to proceed. We need you to proceed to the Trimble system and ascertain the fate of the convoy. And then we have proceed to Trimble system in the beta quadrant again. And then just for good measure, we put it a third time right here in the first map's uh, mission text so that it'll appear. Uh, In the objective window in, yes. for the player. So why don't we make our first map? Okay. So I've already dropped a uh, a blank map here from the... Uh, and so it shows up here as partially created in the map editor. So we're going to go ahead and finish creation. Now we have a choice here. We can use an existing stock map, or we can create our own. I think for uh, this uh, case, we'll actually do a custom map, but um, I should put out frequently that there are often uh, maps that will work just fine. And so don't feel like you have to make every single uh, base map custom. Sometimes you just need a location. Yeah, I mean, me personally, I just I think about what I want to do with the map, and and then I just look through the thing to see uh, what there is that will work for it. Okay, but I mean, for the sake of the sake of uh, demonstration, we're going to go ahead and create a custom map. And so we got the Trimble system. Um, I d think we uh, when we were probably planning this out. I think we decided that we were going to have uh, two different planets that you investigate while you're searching for 
the uh, envoy. So let's go ahead and place those. Any uh, preferences on what kind of plants these should be? Hmm. Well, I, we we want to have them be visually distinct. So maybe maybe make uh, one of them this uh, desolate rock that you're basically just looking to see if there's a crashed spaceship on the rock. And, you know, have, maybe have the other one be like a jungle planet that no one lives on. Those sound good. I have to go for a planetoid for one, because these are quite large. All right, so I'm going to start you out over here in the corner. Okay, so we've got all our assets here on the side, and uh, I've gone ahead and placed one, a yeah, Class D planetoid. And we have quite a selection. Go ahead and place the second one, which uh, we are going to be beaming down to, so we should probably uh, make it Class M. So, ooh, this is kind of interesting. We've got a uh, kind of a frozen one. This could be very cool. I'm going to go ahead and put that down as our second. Put it right over here. Okay. I'm going to take it down just a bit. Since it is much larger, I can afford to take it a little bit off the uh, plane. All right, so also for this system, we are going to uh, need a couple of reach markers so that we can uh, scan each uh, location. Now, def default, for some reason, the reach markers start out at zero, but we obviously need a, a space much larger than that. Pretty might be a little much. Okay, that works. So you can see that your custom space map is big enough for you know several planets and moons, uh, as well as uh, all the other objects we might have access to. You don't want to necessarily overcrowd because, of course, you know, space is big. Uh, planets and moons are very far apart, and even though the scale in Stowe is exaggerated, uh, you definitely don't want to pile too many things on top of each other, especially planets and moons. All right. Second thought, I think we're going to try and just use the planets themselves as interacts. I think that should work. All right, so what else do we need on this map? Uh, okay, so after uh, they scan the uh, second map, we're... I'll go ahead and name these guys. Naming is definitely helpful. Yeah. Well, I mean, especially objects that you intend to uh, use as interacts, um, because the uh, at a distance, the uh, it'll put a box around the object that uh, you can interact with, and so and it'll put the name of the box of the item. So you wanted something that makes sense. I'm also just for the fun of it, I'm going to add a ring to uh, Trimble Five here, and so. Uh, we're kind of white color, so we want to. I'm thinking of blue middle will work. That'd be kind of fun. All right, that's about all the time we have for this episode. We'll be continuing our work next week as we continue building our space map. As this is a uh, new series for us, we would love to hear your thoughts on how we're doing. So send thoughts, suggestions, questions to foundryroundtable at live.com. 
or, or send it along on our Twitter handle, Boundary Round Tap. For tonight, though, uh, we're going to say good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good. Thank you.